All right, so this is the last time that I'm going to do the limit for a while. Um, but this one, it's pretty interesting because I'm not sure what the answer is. Well, I know there are two possible answers, but they both seem equally valid. I want to know why. So if you know, please leave a comment or contact me because I'm really curious and I really want to find out why. So the way I did this was just simply say, we know that, it's known that when limit of x approaches zero, sine of x over x is equals to one. So that if that's the case, one to the power of infinity is one, one to the, and then one to the power of zero is still one. So one to the power of any real number really that is equals to one. So in that case, limit when x approaches zero so if we replace that with 1 to the power of 1 over x, and we know that because it got a squared there, so it must approach from the positive direction. So that is equals to 1, isn't it? However, apparently it's not, actually. Uh, when I put it in decimals, it got a little spike over here. I don't know what's going on. Spike. However, in Wolfram Alpha, there isn't a spike. Um, and it clearly suggests that this is not 1. So something was going on here. And then when I look at the lecture notes that, that my university gave me, and uh, I've had to really thank them for this um, because they helped me a lot on the videos. Uh, when x approaches zero, and then sine of x, sorry for copying this down again. Um, when, the, when, when the university did this, they used a logarithm trick where they take the limit uh, sorry, when the net says e to the power of limit and x approaches zero of natural log of sine x over x to the power of one over x squared. And of course, you know, you can move that down and just take the limit down. So you get, well, ish limit, um, like equivalent ish limit, and then say one on x squared and natural log of sine x on x and then if you really expand on that when you have a limit inside divide one by another that's really equals to limit as x approaches zero uh, natural log of sine x minus natural log of x whole thing over x squared and then at that point you can say um then sine sine equals to zero, but if we put zero in there, you got infinity, and then minus, well, infinity, and then divided by zero. That's not good, is it? But then you have infinity minus infinity over zero, so it kind of gets zero divided by zero-ish thing happening. So, yeah, why not just take the uh, Hobbitel rules and see what, what's happening? When you take the limit of x approaches zero, so that's the chain rule of 1 over sine and then sine x times the derivative of sine x is cos x uh, minus 1 on x whole thing over 2x and uh, have to do a little bit of simplification so if we simplify this by um yeah okay let's just see how what i can what can i do to simplify this um cos x x uh, sine x uh, that's an x there mm, minus sine x over 2x. So if I flip this, that's divide. So that goes at the bottom 2x squared. Ooh, that looks a bit ugly. Okay, let me just clean this up a little bit, write it a bit nicer so my friends won't complain about this. Uh, x minus sine x whole thing over 2x squared sine x. At this point, um, cos, cos, cos x is 1, but you got x at the front, so that becomes 0. 0 minus is 0, x 2 times 0, so now we're writing to 0 divided by 0. So of course, old school L Hopper rules come back again. Um, then we can take the limit when x approaches 0. Uh, cos, that's a chain rule, um, negative sine x, uh, x, negative, that. 
Okay, that looks a bit ugly. Um, plus cos x, and the derivative of x is 1. Negative sine is, becomes negative cos. Cos cos, cancel out. And then, wow, another general. Okay, uh, sine x multiplied by 4x plus 2x squared. And then sine x becomes a cos x. Let's uh, clean this up. Uh, limit when x approaches 0 negative x sine x holding over 4x sine x plus 2x square cos x so now let's try to simplify this first limit as x approaches 0 um, we can first take the negative to the front so let's just do that there and then we can cancel or cancel some x's so that's really become sine x over 4 sine x plus 2x cos x. So now let's try to sub in 0, see what happens. Sine x becomes a 0, that's 0, plus, well, 0, that's no good. So let's try our Hopital's rules again. Uh, equals to a negative limit. Remember to write the limit. Uh, cos x over 4 sine x, that's really just becomes 4 cos x. Plus, there's a chain rule over here. Ooh, minus sine x plus cos x multiplied by 2. So simplify it. Limit x approaches 0, cos x. Probably I don't, because I know cos x is equals to 1. So this thing don't have to go through the um, Al Hopital's rules again. But anyway, let's just, let's just do it anyway. Why not? Um, plus well, minus, 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 minus 2x sine x. So if we try to sub in 0, we will get equals to negative 1 on 6. And uh, this will become 0. So we don't mind that. And uh, that's equals to, OK, but yeah, negative 1 on 6. However, we don't think we've done yet because Remember we started it. Ah, oh, what's going on? Okay, 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 okay. This is bad. Okay, I can't move up now. What's going on? So if we try to find what we did back up here, we set up e. We set up e here, so it's really e to the power of whole thing. So if we move down here, then the answer is really e to the power of negative one on six, and this is roughly zero point eight. 464, which is what Desmos and Wolfram Alpha is suggesting. However, I feels like that my reasoning of 1 is reasonable, but somehow that is not the correct answer, it seems. So please, help me if you know how to do this.